I now call upon the Honorable Dwight Ball, Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, to offer remarks. Well, thank you, uh, Your Honor. I will say that if at any point in my life I ever decide to write a book, Chapter 13 will be a, a very interesting <laughs> chapter. It's a number that's, quite, that's come up in my life quite often, I will say. So your honors, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, and to everyone that has joined us here today at Government House. I'm also pleased to say that for the first time, this is also being live streamed, so people from outside of uh, Newfoundland and Labrador, and certainly in many homes, right here in Newfoundland and Labrador, we'll get a share, an opportunity to share in this momentous moment as we start the next chapter in, in our province. So I'm absolutely honored and humbled to stand here as the 13th Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador. On November the 30th, the people of this great province entrusted our team with the responsibility and the opportunity to govern. They voted for strong leadership, better management, and an open government. And I can assure you, our government will deliver on that mandate. This is a time of change for our province and for our people. A time that, yes, presents some significant challenges, but also a time of hope and a time of opportunity. And as a Premier, I am committed to take on the challenges that we face, but more importantly, capitalize on the opportunities that lay before us. All of this so that we can work together to get our province back on track. So I'm very proud to be here today, gathered with our 12 new cabinet ministers. We have some important work ahead. You have been tasked with the responsibilities where you will need to draw on your own experiences as leaders in areas of industry, business, health care, education, and public service and sometimes the experience of just being a mom or dad. You will need to regularly engage the people of our province in a very proactive and a very authentic way. They want to be listened to. All this while demonstrating your unwavering commitment to openness and transparency in government. So I'd also like to recognize that behind our cabinet, we have an entire team of 31 members who form a caucus, a team who is committed to bringing a strong voice to all Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, bringing people, bringing people and this government together. We are a team of 31. Because we all want to make the right decisions in the weeks and months ahead so that indeed we can build that stronger tomorrow. Public service is not just an individual commitment. It's a family commitment. And personally, I want to recognize my family, Sharon, my daughter, Jade, my brothers, and my sister. You've been on this journey with me, and I am so proud that you've been by my side. But my mother is here today as well. And I am so forever grateful for my parents who taught me by example from a very young age, the value of work, and the value of community. <laughs> and that if you're in a position to give back, well then you should without question do it. And it's for that very same reason that I became involved in this community at a young age, as I said, but more importantly today, it's the very reason why I entered, po I entered politics. None of us have stepped forward in public life because the responsibility of governing was going to be easy. We stepped forward because we wanted to serve the people of our province and make a positive difference in their lives. Now over the history of our province, Newfoundlanders and Labradorians have known and have demonstrated great resilience, and they have overcome challenge after challenge. It's part of who we are. It's our fabric. It's our foundation. 
And now we need to rise to the occasion once again. Our province, as many of you have, have know, is facing a difficult fiscal reality. And once that will require, one that will require a collective leadership, it will also require a resolve of our cabinet and the engagement of all Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. This is my government's top priority. And therefore, on December 22nd, our government will release the mid-year fiscal update. Because we can only move forward if we first lay out the details of where things stand today. Our government is firmly committed to leading our province onward and to a more sustainable future by delivering on our commitments over the next four years. I, along with my cabinet, plan to work with the people of our province so we can share in the optimism that we all have in our future. But we will also need to address the challenges of today and the solutions that we can all be part of. As your Premier, I make this one promise to you. This government, our commitment to people will not waver and our focus will be clear. We will make decisions based on evidence, best practices, and we will only take action after due diligence. We will manage our resources wisely, and we will always put the people of our province first. We will bring strong leadership, and we will bring that strong management and we will be open in everything we do. And we will uphold the highest ethical standards. We will foster a collaborative and a pro productive relationship with our new federal government, one that achieves results for the people of our province. And we will never forget it's to serve people that government exists. Today marks a new beginning and a new opportunity for all of us. So let's embrace it. Let's work to achieve all things that we know that we can do together. Because together and united, we are stronger. So thank you very much and congratulations. And I really appreciate the fact that so many of you came out today. And your honors, it's always a pleasure. This, this visit never gets old. <laughs> <laughs>